Ah, we love the feeling of when it's still dark outside. And here's our taxi picking us up right now. Wow, look at the balloons all taken off all around us. Another rare occasion where we wake up early because we wanted to get to Pamukle right as the gates opened. They don't even look opened really, but hopefully we can get in pretty soon. The hot air balloons are taking off all around us and it just looks incredibly cool. So we got dropped off at the wrong gate. We wanted to go to South Gate, which we told him, but he also doesn't speak very good English. So he should be coming back in a second to take us to the South Gate, which should be open. Now at the South Gate, and there are several people, but not a ton, so I still have high hopes. <laughs> we got here at like just the time that the sun is rising behind the mountains, so it is the prettiest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> this is like another world. Oh my goodness, look at all these balloons. So we have to walk through Hierapolis first to get to Pamukkale. So we're just kind of rushing through it because we want to get the pretty pictures and videos at Pamukkale. But we'll come back here and explore because Hierapolis actually looks really cool. <laughs> Stepping on. It's cold. I don't think we're to the cool part yet. <laughs> kind of hurts. Oh, this one's warm. That's cold. <laughs> I haven't found any warm ones yet. Only been cold. Cold. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the big moment. Okay, it's supposedly really slippery. So hand, please. <laughs> It's not freezing, but it is pretty cold. Slippery. Okay, oh no. Mineral on the camera. 
Mission accomplished of being the first ones to be on the travertines. So now we're gonna walk all the way down to the end and see if there's anything else exciting. I'm actually very surprised that we we're the first ones here because we got here like 15 minutes after it opened. It seemed like everyone was scared to get on and so we just so walked on first. So we were the first, first ones and we just walked on. It's so funny to see everyone just like run past you and they see that you can actually start walking on it to get their pictures. They're kind of like casually walking super quickly to get past us. It's kind of funny. <laughs> hey puppy. Some parts are so sharp. Golly. You gotta walk in the cloud part. <laughs> the cotton cloud part. Good thing we got here when we did. Yeah, because we were literally the first people to walk all the way down and people just followed behind us. There are like little pools as you go down, but you definitely want to swim in the first pool because that's where the warm water is. <laughs> Once it gets down to these pools, it just gets cold. So definitely swim in the first pool you get to. This water flowing down comes from the very top up there, and so it makes sense that it cools down on the cold rock as it goes farther and farther. You literally can't do anything now. There's so many people. We've only been here for like, what, 45 minutes maybe? Yeah. So you definitely want to get here right when it opens. Right at 6.30, or in our case, 6.45. 6.45. Just be the first ones on. That's the lesson here. We just stopped at the antique pool, also known as Cleopatra's pool, to change clothes. That's uh, just a thermal pool that has ruins in it, like columns and stuff from an earthquake and ages past. It's kind of a tourist attraction, so we did not swim in the pool. But it's free to go into if you want to go look at it. So that's what we did. Now we're walking around Hierapolis, we think. It's humongously big. <laughs> and so we're just gonna walk around and see what we can find. See what we can see? We're just gonna walk around and see what we can see. You found yourself a little place to stand. I like this little place to stand. We got a nice view. It's so peaceful. There's no one in this little park area. It's so nice. You can just hear the birds chirping and just... What? <laughs> <laughs> the moon's still out too. This is literally insane. It's just green and brown mountains and then all of a sudden a little plop of white just in the small little area around here. And then over there's more mountains. I, I just don't understand. Things like this make my brain hurt. I don't understand why these things are here and how they look like this. <laughs> Right now we're walking through a famous street of Hierapolis. This city used to be one of the biggest in the Roman Empire. It was a wealthy city with over 100,000 people and it was well known for its arts and its philosophy.
So we're just exiting Frontinus Street. It's a one kilometer long shopping street, used to be shopping street, that runs parallel to the travertines that we were just in. This city is really interesting because it used to be one of the biggest in the Roman Empire. It had over 100,000 people and it became a wealthy center because it was famous for its arts and its philosophy. Okay, we just explored Northern Necropolis. We read in a guide that it was one of the most unexplored and like least visited places in Hierapolis. We kind of just wandered over here by chance, but it is definitely worth visiting. So many, so many cool scenes and backgrounds. Just, and yeah, the landscape surrounding it is just so pretty and very nature-y. Yeah, it is outstandingly cool. These are the best ruins we've been to by far. Even better than Ephesus. Ephesus was a little like more showy, and this feels like real ruins. Yeah, Ephesus is a little more iconic, just cause like it's mentioned in the most important book in the world. <laughs> but this is, this is really cool. Now we're headed back towards the southern part of the city to see the church, and uh, there's a few other things that I cannot remember. <laughs> So this is the remains of the Christian church. It was one of the most important churches, one of the most important buildings actually in Hierapolis. And now it is overgrown and not visited at all. It's a little sad. Right now I'm sitting at the Ancient Theater of Hierapolis. It is maybe the most impressive theater I have ever seen. Of all the ruins we visited, this one is crazy big. And it extends so high up and down. It's like four blocks big. It also has a very impressive remaining display in the front. Ephesus's was like completely gone, but this one is still intact, which is super neat. Spotted the kitty. We just had a little stage fright, understandable. The kitties are fans of uh, theaters. Just waiting for the show to start. Elena. That's me. Okay, we made it to the Platonian, which is a place honoring Pluto because there's a cave here that used to be like an entrance to the underworld and Pluto is the Roman god of the underworld. It used to emit poison gas and animals and birds would die. Yeah, looks pretty poisonous to me. I would not want to drink from that water if I was an animal. Over there's a Christian church. This is a temple to Apollo. 
and that is an inscription to Pluto. It doesn't make much sense to me how <laughs> there's so many crossings of uh, religions there. <sighs> we had to sit down for some food. It was time. I was getting hungry. That's good.